Thousands of employees, including those in the highest positions, have been laid off by Elon Musk, and larger layoffs are reportedly still to come. When Elon Musk disclosed that Twitter had too many employees managing without purpose and too few performing actual work, such as coding, everyone was taken aback. Elon Musk does not comprehend what he is doing with Twitter, and it's not looking good for the platform, these are words from former Twitter executives, who are among the many people who oppose Musk. As Elon Musk points out, Twitter hasn't been profitable in years and is in a terrible situation due to financial difficulties. As a result, big advertising companies like the Interpublic Group of Companies went against him and stopped all of their advertisements on Twitter, which is a huge hit for the platform. This is a really intriguing circumstance. Let's clarify. According to Elon Musk, Twitter will charge users $8 per month if they want a blue checkmark next to their name to indicate a verified account. Musk asserted that after a $44 billion buyout of the social networking site, it was essential to do away with spam as part of the steps undertaken. A blue tick next to a username, which is often reserved for public figures, is currently free. Critics claim that the change can make it more challenging to find reliable sources. The richest man in the world, Elon Musk, also predicted that premium users would dominate searches and responses while receiving only half as many advertisements. The tycoon described the previous blue tick vetting procedure as a lords and peasants system. New Wexler, a former Twitter global policy communications head, issued a warning that charging for blue ticks would make it harder to spot false content. With misinformation being a problem for many platforms, verification is one method that journalists, academic researchers, and some users employ to weed out misinformation or low-quality information, according to Wexler. When you give out blue checks for rent, as Musk's detractors claim, it becomes more difficult to weed out false information and find reliable sources. Prior to this change, Twitter used a simple online application form to validate uses for blue ticks, for those whose identities were susceptible to impersonation, such as journalists, politicians, and celebrities. The mechanism was put in place in 2009 as a result of a lawsuit accusing the company of not doing enough to stop bogus accounts. As of 2021, there were about 400,000 verified users on Twitter. The fact that Twitter hasn't made a profit in years presents a big challenge for Musk. Despite the fact that some companies are concerned about advertising on the site under his leadership, he has declared that he plans to reduce Twitter's reliance on advertising. Last Monday, General Motors, a company that competes with Tesla in the electric vehicle market, said that it would stop running ads on the company's website. While this is happening, a number of other significant businesses have subtly stopped their advertising. This is according to a media buyer for a significant advertising company, as they wait to see how Musk's intentions turn out on the website. IPG, one of the biggest advertising agencies in the world, advised its clients to forego Twitter advertising for a week due to a lack of clarity on Twitter's efforts to ensure trust and safety on the network. Every year, some of the biggest firms in the world send billions of dollars to manage their marketing expenses. When it was announced that there would be a fee for blue tick access, there was skepticism because early estimates put the monthly cost at $20. Elon Musk's opponents concurred with novelist Stephen King when he declared, in response to claims of modifications, Twitter should pay me. Musk wrote to King, we need to find a way to pay the bills. Musk said that depending on the nation, prices can change. Only a few nations, the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, offer Twitter's blue service. In the United States, it costs $4.99 a month, and the service now provides a more condensed range of advantages such the capacity to undo tweets. On Twitter, Musk announced that users of the new blue service would also get precedence in responses, mentions, and search, which he characterized as is crucial in the fight against spam accounts. Users will now get to submit longer video and audio clips and view half as many advertisings. The precise time of the adjustments is unknown. One of Elon Musk's financial backers in the Twitter takeover supported the $8 plan. Binance CEO, a cryptocurrency exchange, has invested $500 million in the deal. And he backed the idea since it would combat bots or dangerous automated accounts. When asked about the reason for Binance providing the funding for the deal, Zhao noted that the company has the goal of becoming a powerful advocate for the right to free expression. They are hopeful on improving one's financial independence, and free freedom of expression comes before freedom from financial shackles. Musk kicked out a number of important executives, including the CEO, and was elevated to the position of sole director of the corporation. 
In addition to that, he has put up a group of colleagues to aid him with the running of the company including Kalakarnas and his own attorney, in addition to recruiting Tesla staff to analyze Twitter's code. This week additional high-ranking workers announced their departures extending the exodus. Previously the company's chief customer officer and AD manager, Sarah Personet, resigned. In this sense, Twitter is transitioning into a new medium. The company's chief people and diversity officer, Delana Brand, posted on LinkedIn to announce her departure. General Manager of Core Technologies Nick Caldwell announced his departure from Twitter by updating his bio to read, former Twitter exec. Vice President of Global Sales Jean-Philippe Mayhew, Director of Product Jay Sullivan, and Chief Marketing Officer Leslie Berland have all left Twitter. It wasn't clear whether they left or resigned. Even before Musk officially assumed leadership, reports of employment cuts circulated. According to sources, Twitter's new billionaire owner intends to cut 3,700 jobs, or over half of the company's workforce, in order to save costs. Employees will also be required to go back to work. The sources note that the specifics of the headcount reduction might yet change and that Musk and a group of advisors have been looking at several options for job cutbacks and other policy adjustments at San Francisco-based Twitter. Two of the participants asserted that in one of the possible outcomes, fired employees would receive a 60-day severance package. Robert Caden, Twitter's chief financial officer, left the company after the layoffs were finished, becoming one of the last pre-Musk CEOs to do so, according to sources with knowledge of the matter. Musk appears to be under pressure to find cost-cutting measures for a company that he thinks he overpaid for. The billionaire agreed to pay $54.20 per share in April of this year, just as the markets were tanking. He then made months-long attempts to break the contract, saying that the company had misled him about the prevalence of bogus accounts. In response, Twitter sued Musk to force him to keep his word. In recent weeks, Musk gave in and agreed to complete the deal under the predetermined terms. Several people in director and vice president jobs were fired over the weekend, according to others with knowledge of the matter. The reports state that other executives were told to compile lists of team members who might be cut loose. That's it for today. Please subscribe to our channel The Trending Updates.